And it looks like we're on. So welcome to our fourth installment of the Ode Chronicles. Um, last time I checked, I'm still Libby Reitman, your moderator and ultra runner wannabe. So for those first time watching, uh, the Ode Chronicles is where we talk to the participants of uh, Michigan's own backyard ultra style ultra marathon, Ode to Laz. And that was held again uh, in 2020 this year. And here we are uh, in that Chronicles, we learn a little bit about what makes our runners tick and what their experiences have been uh, at the Ode to Laz event and events associated with the Ode. So tonight I am joined by some new faces. I have Josh Staggers, Tom Englehart, and Cecil Richards, all who ran uh, our 2020 Ode to Laz. And we are here to pick their brains. So thank you guys for joining me tonight. If you can go around and just uh, tell me who's who again for everyone who can't, might not be able to see your names underneath your faces. <laughs> I'm Cecil. Is that all you want to know? <laughs> yeah. I don't know if they'll all your names so I can see your names next to your your screen but I don't know if everybody else will so Cecil's on the bottom I'm Josh all right and I'm, and I'm Tom all right guys um so first of all none of you are from Michigan from what I understand you're all from Ohio correct yep okay, just so uh it's east of Columbus about an hour Tom is okay. east of Columbus about at 40 minutes. Okay. And how did you hear about the Ode to Laz? What, what brought you to us? And we can start, let's start, a, let's start with Tom. All right, this could be a long story because okay. the, way, the way we all got together. So, and just to back up with like us all being from the same area, we actually all work in the same plant. So we all work together in okay. Zanesville, Ohio at a, uh, uh, food plant that's based out of Michigan. You can guess which one it is with a, has one big capital letter. Um. <laughs> I'm trying to think. <laughs> a food plant? Correct. Based in Battle Creek. Oh, oh gosh. I should know this. Oh, I arts, eggos. Kalamazoo. <laughs> I'm drawing a blank. Tony but Kitalia. anyway. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> All right. So it's Kellogg's. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so so we all work together, and we've probably known each other, um, in or even outside of work. I guess we knew each other before we started working together. So twenty plus years, um, but wow. just recently started running together. So Cecil and I have probably ran together for the past maybe five or six years, and then Josh on and off, I guess. So anyway, back to how we heard about the, the Ode race, right? So if we, if we start in November of last year, Cecil and I were following a local um, ultra runner, um, Gabe Rainwater, that's from our area. So actually the like Fresno, Ohio which is in the Chocolate area. So he was doing the, he was doing bigs, you know, the world championship. So we're trying to follow him and see how he's doing. And as we watched that race, you know, Maggie had her, you know, crazy victory. And, and, you know, really that was our first back. We didn't know what a backyard ultra was until we saw that. And this became like, wow, this is really neat. And it was inspiring and all that. So, you know, that was November. So a few months go by and I'm not sure what, um, what exactly drove me to it. Well, I, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm turning 50 next year and I had this goal. I'm going to run 50 miles before, before I turn 50. Nice. Thought, well, this is the backyard you know, um, format, that's, it's going to be easy. <laughs> you get to rest every hour, and, you know, so, so this is how I'm going to do it. So um, January 4th, I think it was maybe a, 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 you know, weekend hangover from New Year's and resolutions and all that. I, I signed up and at the time my knee hurt and I, I was telling Cecil at work, like, I don't know if I can run anymore. My knees are hurting and I'm in bad shape and I don't know why I did this. So I tried to talk Cecil into being my crew. Right, so I'm like, I'm gonna go run this thing. I don't know how long it'll go, but my goal is 50 miles. Will you come help, you know, crew for me? And 
so initially he kind of said well yeah and we, we 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 chatted about some more but after that like about maybe two weeks after that a friend of mine um jd horde which is another ohio kind of ultra runner um he ran um the ohio backyard ultra which is a um, you know actually kind of near us but he ran it and met chad wright which is um this navy seal that um you know he's kind of a pretty popular um, ultra runner right now and chad has this amazing podcast of with rich roll that, that like tells you all this stuff you can do mentally to prepare yourself and and, and do this so it, and anybody out there if you want to the rich roll chad wright podcast it's about an hour and 45 minutes long but it changed our lives right like uh -huh. I, I watched it 20 times so it's so when I watched it, I told Cecil, hey, watch this thing. You know, this guy's amazing. It's so inspiring and all this. And then Cecil comes back and you're like, I'm not going to crew for you. Now I'm running it. So <laughs> he goes, let's ask Josh if he'll crew for us. <laughs> so same thing. Happens. Josh watches the video. I'm not crewing for you. I'm running it. Now the goal is not 50. It's 100. Ah, uh, okay. Within this podcast, and this is where this, like, kind of is like almost an amazing story. Now. So in, embedded in this, like um, in Chad Wright's thing, he, he had run that, that the, the Ohio backyard and he met a guy named Thomas Lynch and he talks in the story about how Thomas Lynch had never really ran more than, um, you know, like 12 or 13 miles in, in a race and shows up at this backyard ultra and is gonna try to run a hundred miles. And he mentors him during the race and tells him all these, you know these things um these i guess um mental tips and and you know one of them is don't die in a chair you know if you've ever heard that <laughs> that's, that's chad wright's statement it is you, know, you don't die in the chair you you die on the out on the course you know you don't quit right. sit in your chair in between loops you go out there and try to finish so anyway he has all these mantras and, and that's so, what it's hard is. well what's weird is thomas lynch is from Pachakton again same area we're from which we didn't know until this came out like even I, it might have been even after we had ran um the ode race that we found out that's where he was from so just kind of a weird um coincidence there so anyway that's how that's how we all got signed up and decided to do it so that was back in you know january of last year awesome okay so it wasn't a last minute covid decision because everything else got canceled <laughs> No. So you guys have been planning. So you you had all three planned on uh, running this together. Um, and did you take a? Did you have anybody crewing you? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, okay. we, we had an amazing crew. So um, it it took some convincing because it doesn't sound like the best job in the world when you explain it some to somebody. Right. So my my wife is a, a sweetheart of all sweethearts. So I convinced her to do it. And um, Josh's wife signed up for it as well. Oh, okay. um, Josh, is, Josh has a son too that was, I think, uh, 13 at the time, and he signed up to help us. Um, so we could, we definitely could not have done it without them. So we didn't realize how valuable they were until that day. So oh, we had, we didn't want to overwhelm them with all the all the things that needed done, and thought we could do it ourselves. Um, but they they had plans to kind of take turns and just go back to the hotel and sleep and have kind of a uh, vacation at the hotel and just come over and tend to us. But yeah. they ended up having to stay the whole night for us and yeah. do everything for us. So um, yeah, I definitely couldn't have did it without, without the crew. Yeah, that that is the hard part um, about Holly Rec is that once you're in, you're in. And once those gates close, you can't go back and forth. So oh, I didn't know that if that if they knew that. <laughs> yeah, and I I know I know it's listed, you know, in the um, race like description. I don't know if you get an email or the all the information packet that you get um, electronically before the race. It's in there somewhere, but it, it's it's I think it's something that gets looked over to sometimes easily and. And yeah, once once those gates close for dusk, they don't want people going back and forth. So that's that's hard. Did they was that kind of a rude surprise that they had to stay all night? Not or were no. they like into it by then? <laughs> no. And they were even when we wanted them to leave, 
they were more than willing to stay. And the yeah. fact that the way that the COVID had caused the two different starting lines, they had to be there anyways because they had to drive us to the, the other starting line. You know, at night. right at that point, they couldn't have left if they would have wanted to. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. The state, the staggered starts were something new. So, um, since we mentioned them, how did you guys feel those, uh, you know, those staggered starting lines? How did they work for you? Did you guys have trouble with the transition or? I wouldn't, I wouldn't trouble. Um, it was a rush, you know, and there was, Dad was obviously, um, trying to get everybody through it. You know, so he was yelling, which he should have been. You know, <laughs> not, not the best listeners, but uh, <laughs> he, you know, he was just trying to keep it moving. And yeah. like Cecil mentioned before about our crew, they were they were so good. They had packed. We had an unbelievably large uh, <laughs> on Tom, Tom like Rick has an awning that's twice as long as what your normal awning would be. And they, they packed up and we just basically had to finish that last lap and jump in the truck and go. It, it was awesome. Oh, good. I'm glad it went smooth for you guys. So um, tell me a little bit about your history with running. I, Ted wants to know, and I want to know too, why do you run long? So what what do you get out of it by doing these long runs or what what did you get out of it this year i guess <laughs> I, you want me to start yeah so i guess my running history is um growing up i always had a, a decent amount of speed but i was never allowed to do any track or anything like that which i loved um but it kind of got away from me about um, my early 30s and i was 205 pounds and very out of shape and i thought that um, this was ridiculous for somebody this young and so on. And I started running a little bit and it might have been um, some inspiration from Tom too. But I remember going for 1.5 miles and having to take a nap. It was just ridiculous. And I remember my first 5K, how proud I was to run it in 29 minutes. So, you know, I kind of just stuck with it off and on through the years. Um, and um, did some a lot of 5Ks because they were, of course, short, and it kind of kept me in shape enough um, that I was happy anyway. And we got into a little bit of distance where we ran a couple halves, and I kind of fell in love with that. And then Tom had me sign up for my first full marathon back in 2016. It was Columbus Marathon. Okay. Um, and we trained after work, um, and it was fun. I mean, there – I, it got to the point where the distance running really didn't hurt anymore and it became more enjoyable. Um, and I think that's what I like about it the most is even though you're sore at the end of the day, it seems to, um, it didn't hurt me like the speed work did. So speed work mm -hmm. was, you, you seem to suffer after a 5k, things tighten up, things hurt and so on. And I think that's kind of why we fell in love with, um, running long distance. So after we ran our first marathon, we did this thing called Ragnar. Um, and it is, you run, you, you get a team and you run, you, it's a team of four and you ran uh, 132 miles, Tom? 120, 30 miles. miles. Yeah, so that was our, I guess our first um, run that we did more than uh, a marathon distance. So. Uh, we fell in love with it just from the training um, perspective, and it, it was at a trail close to, uh, well, it was in Zanesville, Ohio. So that was really a, a my introduction, introduction to trail running as well. Um, so trail running was a little bit hard for me because uh, I was still a little bit overweight and not in the best shape, but made it through it. And we did good. We actually won our class. So a lot of inspiration oh, there. Yeah. And then um, I guess after that, we just – kind of stuck with some uh, long training runs and nothing, you know, try to stay away from the speed work and find enjoyment in running. So yeah. I haven't, the, up to that point of load to as the longest I ran was 30 miles in training. Um, wow. Yeah, so um, that's kind of my, my background for it. I, uh, through these years, I've seen my health get better almost every single year. Um, this year, I think, might have been the first year that had a completely green health report. 
So nice. That, that's super inspiring, inspiring for me. And that's kind of the reason I love to do it. Plus you just get to hang out with friends and you get to eat what you want and you get to drink what you want. So <laughs> those are, those are the, probably the two biggest benefits for me. Yeah. Yeah, my, my favorite question is, uh, do you run to eat or do you eat to run? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, Thomas, how about you? What was your background? Um, so, I ran a little bit in high school, so cross country and track. Um, never was, um, you know, a star or anything like that. Didn't, didn't do anything outside of high school. I, I ran with two um, all-Ohio runners that eventually became all Americans in college. So, you know, these were like, you know, it's rare to have two on the same team. So to train with those guys every day and try to keep up with them, that was, that was kind of a neat experience. But, you know, my, my uh, running career kind of ended with high school. Okay. Um, so I ran a little bit to, to stay in shape in my twenties, you know, right out of high school, I might've continued to run a few five K's and things just from, you know, having that connection with the running community. But, really fell away from it and did other things um you know did some motorcycle racing and things and like i said that was my way you know i say ran to stay in shape a three mile run three days a week was a big deal for me to stay in shape so that kind of took me through my 20s and even to my late 30s is when i picked running back up and, and again similar to cecil you know not not super overweight but just out of shape you know not not you know, I remember running similar to see, so I remember running at a local trail that was a one mile trail and I did three miles under 30 minutes and thought, oh, all right, you know, I'm on, I'm, I'm getting in shape. But anyway, it, it, it kind of blew up from there. I got, I got the bug again and just ran a lot. And um, so that's probably been, oh, I guess it's been about 10 years ago and, you know, ran a lot, did a couple marathons. Um, I did a, a 50K in 2000. 11, I guess. Um, that was my longest, you know, uh, you know, really worked up to do that. And yeah, uh, probably six months after that, I was scheduled to do a marathon and training for that marathon. I, I kind of overused my hip and, you know, found out that I damaged it earlier. So I had reconstructive hip surgery in 2012. And just oh, so we can get, you know, just so we can get the beard story out of the way. Um, <laughs> that's when I started growing this beard. So thank you because I was gonna ask how long it took you to grow it. <laughs> so literally 2012 after hip surgery, I was off work for you know quite a while and laying on the couch and, and so grew a beard and, and you know that there's where it's at and, and there's rumors that it's it's getting cut off, you know, at age forty nine and three hundred and sixty four. So yeah. <laughs> We'll see. If if I run Odin next year, it'll be clean shaven. Oh man! But but Tom's <laughs> wife doesn't know how ugly he is without a beard, so we don't know how. Yeah, how she's go over. Never seen me clean shaven. But anyway, <laughs> to to come back from that hip surgery, like the doctor basically told me, I shouldn't run a lot. So he put it to me this way: like he said I could run, but he said that hip's like a thirty thousand mile set of tires. You use them however you want. So you go running seven days a week on the pavement and doing these this stuff, you're gonna be back in here when you're 50, getting it replaced. If you take it easy and you know, you know, you're a swimmer and a biker now. And and I kind of refused that. So I did I switched to you know high cushion shoes. So you know the, every, that's the fad now. I I got that's what drove me to the trail. So get off the pavement, get off the concrete, again like Cecil, get off the speed work. Long and slow seems to be really, um, you know, helping that. So I don't have any hip problems. I've been to, you know, massage therapists and therapy and, and, and really learned about a lot about that and changed my stride and things and, and, you know, came to this. So like Cecil said, you know, I had ran that 30 miles back in, in, in uh, you know, 2011. But since then, I'd ran maybe a couple of road marathons. And during our training, you know, you know, Josh and Cecil and I all, we did 20 and 30 mile runs. So we did a lot. We did, we did typical ultra training for a hundred mile race. We knew that's, that was our goal. So that's kind of what okay. our training was. So we did several 30 mile runs. So, you know, we're talking a 70 mile PR. <laughs> so, yeah. so when you say, you know, are you guys, how, how did you get into ultra running? We feel like 
uh, I've done 150K and these guys have done that in training. And you know, so we hadn't done any ultra running. This is, this is you know what? Um, that seems to be the common theme in my interviews recently. I mean, Mike, Mike Rowe, who is also from Ohio. I don't, I don't know if you guys watched our previous interviews with uh, him, Sarah and Miko. He never even run on a trail before. Yeah. <laughs> so he, he, and he had never run more than, you know, he had never done an event more than a marathon. And mm -hmm. so, and then he went out and ran uh, over a hundred miles, you know, so on a trail. And so it's just kind of amazing um, what these events get people to do. I don't know how other way to describe it, but yeah, you get, you kind of get like a fever and. You guys did awesome. So, yeah, um, that, that, well, that takes us back to that where I was talking about the Chad Wright thing. It's you have to have if you don't have the mental side and toughness. I mean, that's what's improved in my running is as I and, and that's why you see you know older runners doing well at ultras because yes, it's nat you naturally have more mental toughness. But if you can tap into that, you can do anything. Yeah, yeah, it's it is definitely at least 50 percent if not more of the game for these especially for these style uh backyard style races so all right josh your turn tell me a little bit about you and your running history okay so um i didn't really run in high school or anything i ran track in junior high just because that was a co-ed sport and it was it was fun to do but <laughs> i was you're trying to meet girls. <laughs> <laughs> when I was 21, so I was I was slender in high school. Well, I graduate high school, go to a trade school, balloon up to like 235. And I met a guy um, at a job that was, he was in his early 40s and he had ran some marathons. He was into running and he, he invited me to come run with him, which was not really accurate you know we should started at the same time and, he, <laughs> and I, I fat dogged for 10 minutes and took a break <laughs> but that was you're talking like 2000 2001 somewhere in there yeah. and you'd he, he kind of got me into it and I enjoyed it like I was surprised I enjoyed it but I would do like I did a 5k with him but then I never did another race for I don't know, probably 10 years or more. Oh. Uh, I would run, I, I would go in spurts where I would run a couple times. I would do it two or three times a week, and I might do three or four miles. Well, Tom and Cecil start training for this Ragnar race, and, you know, I was still running some, but, you know, the furthest distance at that point I had ran was probably six miles. Well, one of their teammates dropped out, and it was way too close to that event for me to get in shape for it but I still like I thought you know if they needed me you know I would I would try it right so then I just started trying to go farther so I did seven miles I was, I was pretty excited about that you know and I think for me like that's when it began that's when the carrot began you know you 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 could the further you went the better you felt about it you know even though there are people now, now that I know there are people that can run 200 miles or 300, you know, the, all these crazy things. But, you know, to me, it was like, I've been running three or four miles all these years. So I didn't end up doing the Ragnar with them. But then uh, a local state park that we have has a really nice 10.4 mile loop, which is the 50K that Tom did is, is three loops of that. Well, they also have a, a single loop race. So later that year, 2016, I did that race. And it's on a trail, and, and like these guys have said, the trail is just so much more fun. There's so much more, you know, appealing for your eyes to, to look around, to be in the woods. You know, it's way better than, than yeah. So from that point, I started doing, you know, Cecil and I and even Tom, we did some, some um, half marathons, you know, locally. But before this, like Tom told you the story, of us going to Ode, you know, when Cecil called me, he's like, or sent me a text, you know, would you want to be my crew? And I was thinking, I want to be your crew. I, I want to run it, you know? <laughs> so, we started training, you know, for that. And 
And I had never ran more than a half up to that ode. The plan was to run a full trail marathon before that, but of course it got canceled. It got moved and canceled and then moved and canceled. So I never did get to do that. And I guess me want to do this, the backyard, especially because I've had stomach problems in the past, even with halves, you know, I got to where like, if I run eight or 10 miles very hard, my stomach would give me problems, you know? So okay, this backyard thing, I just have to run four miles. Great. And it's only four miles at, you know, 11 or 12 minutes a mile. That's easy. You can do that in your sleep. Right. <laughs> and and as, it, as it turns out, it, you know, it did end up being like that. And it was, you know, it was great. Yeah. So Just Josh, didn't, Josh didn't tell you, he waited until the very last night to sign up for the ode. Oh. He was not committed. <laughs> he, he really wanted to crew for me. <laughs> so did you guys all plan together that your goal was going to be 100 miles not originally like tom yeah. it was goal- like how do you go from doing a half marathon to be like yeah i'm gonna go for 100 that's more stupid <laughs> Man, that's, I- that's where you watch the sad right video and you'll be running 100 next year yeah. And you know what? I got to look that up because <laughs> <laughs> I am impressed. So that is too funny. So, so that I know we, I was going to ask you when you first learned about backyard style running, but you guys have answered that. Um, do you have any events, first of all, um, that you're, that you've done since the ode this year or anything that you're training for next year, other than our race, of course? Are you going to do more of this long stuff or what? Today. <laughs> well, today, that's right. Today, you guys did a, a full trail marathon. Yeah, we are all signed up for the 50K in December at the local state park. Oh, perfect. Okay. So the O didn't like ruin your running <laughs> aspirations. You were like, ah, I got that mileage and now I'm done. <laughs> It definitely affects you. I'm not going to lie about that. Yeah. Yeah. Josh and I had a rough day today. Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> have you, did you have trouble recovering from the ode this year? Define trouble. Um, <laughs> did you walk? <laughs> I mean, how right. long was it, how long was it uh, until you guys started training again? Two weeks. Two weeks, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, that's fair. Yeah, Did you have any any injuries? I didn't, but I didn't go a hundred miles either. Okay. Well, you went you went seventy five miles, so right? Yeah. And that's I just a pretty had, that's some, a pretty long way. So maybe a little bit of a pride issue, but I got over that pretty quick. Okay. <laughs> we'll talk about that coming up here. <laughs> but yeah, um, not, Tom nothing. and Josh, any injuries for you guys? That you had nothing, to deal with? Nothing significant. You know, I was surprised that, like, I've ran shorter distances harder and 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 been way sore. And I think it, it was a testament for our training and what we've learned over the years. Again, we're all, you know, in the 40-year-old bracket, right? And 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 I think that was the, the biggest strength that we learned. Like, when you're training for this kind of ultra, when you're talking – you know, and, and I guess we never ran a 50 mile race. So I'm going to say 50 and more because we, okay. we only had a 30 to go on, but you can't cheat your shoes. You can't cheat your socks. You can't cheat your nutrition. So like my wife was not extremely happy when she would see three different pairs of brand new shoes in the basement, you know, like testing them out because you give them one run and if there's one problem next next pair of shoes because you can't run 100 miles and have blisters and and all this other you know so yeah it was a science project for us the whole time and and that's just kind of how we work at work right where we, we do a lot of planning and things so like we literally had excel spreadsheets so this is what i'm eating every hour <laughs> so that our body would know okay i'm eating mashed potatoes and i'm eating this and i'm eating this so it was laid out i mean this, oh, this wow. element, these are the shoes i'm wearing these are my backup socks you know so we were our planning was was pretty tight. So, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. So your crew really didn't have to do much guesswork then. You had it all laid out for them, exactly what you needed and when. Yeah, and I had to do a little bit more. My wife was not unable to go do a do, do a, a issue with a, with my my mother was having a health issue, and and um, we have a fifteen and a half year old chocolate lab that that can't be left at home. So my mom couldn't babysit our lab, so my wife didn't get to go. So it was a last minute thing where Josh just um, you know came along to give us a third person and help me out. So you know, again that that. Our crew was great, and, and it was, and again, first time crewing. They had no idea what this race was or how to crew for somebody. <laughs> right. That, yeah, and that's always a learning curve. Um, my husband crewed for me last last year's ode, not this year, and he had, you know, we, I didn't know what I needed from a crew, and he didn't know what he was supposed to be doing. <laughs> so it was basically just me yelling at him, like. I need this food, you know, and he was like, oh, okay, like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> so, yeah, there's definitely a learning curve, and uh, and he's learned a lot just from doing it one time, as I'm sure your families have, too, now. So, um, do you think you'll ever get them to crew for you again, or were, <laughs> were, they, were they traumatized, or were they in your no. I think uh, I think they all three of them did an awesome job, and they would sign up in a heartbeat for the next okay. one. Okay, good, good. We didn't scare them away then. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess since this was your guys' first backyard style ultra, um, because you haven't done any other backyard since, right? Correct. No. Okay. I was going to ask you if there was any differences, um, if you had noticed, but I guess I guess we'll have to put that on the back burner until you guys do another one. Um, but it, I, I've heard from a couple of different people that they find the ode to be a very social race. And would you guys agree with that? And um, you know, did you enjoy the social aspect of it, even though it was a much smaller event this year? Um, I, I heard it was still pretty social. So what do you guys think about it? Well, just to start, um, Tom never shuts up. So every one of our runs together is a social event. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> but I'll let Tom answer the question. <laughs> uh, so, geez, I feel like I've already done all the talking. <laughs> I, so We got to get Josh to talk more too. <laughs> yeah. So there's, there's two things with that. So there is like, so... Like immediately we met, um, I think it's Paul Johnson. Mm -hmm. He was our like pit mate or whatever, our, uh, you know, camping mate. He was right beside us, you know, so super nice guy. And and I think he went deep. He went 60 or more miles um, with okay. us. So immediately, you know, friendly, you know, and, and again, you know, there's a, there's a stigma of Ohio, Michigan, right? Like to not like each other because of football. <laughs> like that. But, you know, could not you know, say enough about Tad, the crew, and, and, and everybody. And, you know, we had the whole, you know, the two um, different starting points. Like, we'd never seen Sarah until we got to the, you know, transition point, right? So yeah. Sarah and Abby were both on, you know, from the other transition point. And then, and then Miko and, and us were from, you know, from ours. So it was kind of like there was this a little bit of a rivalry when we joined, you know, groups it, it you know it felt like a survivor episode like who are these people you know and what are they doing here and and, and you know when you run with somebody that like long especially when you get when you start getting under 10 people right you know i think people have talked how you kind of spread out the but like it's funny you know mike Rowe lives 24 miles from me we you know we've never met obviously you know i'm just because it was just weird that we both show up at the same place and the way we actually met at the race, he was running in front of us and he's like, is that a Columbus half shirt? Like, I got that same <laughs> shirt, right? And so and then we start talking like, you know, so that was kind of that whole thing. But when as we got smaller and smaller as a group, it became really social. Like, and, and I think Sarah even has talked about in some of her interviews, like she's a real extrovert and, and likes to talk. And that's, that's what passes the time. Yeah. This is our first one. We have no idea what we're doing, and we feel like outsiders, right? It's COVID. We don't know how much we're supposed to be interacting. <laughs> and we don't know anybody, and it was weird. You know, that that road race is really a community race. It's a Michigan race. There's, 
you know, there's a sprinkling of people from outside, but really it's a Michigan race and everybody knows everybody. Like it was really, you know, strange to, to, to be interjected into that and then accepted as we ran the race, I guess we went deeper and deeper, you know, it, it, it was a, 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 like, we felt like we knew Sarah all our lives once we finished the race. Like, it was like, holy cow, you know, and, and we're in awe of her. We always still felt like, geez, she could run 200 miles, you know. We yeah. knew that. Like, it wasn't a shock to see her go that far because we felt like we weren't pushing her at all. But, yeah, yeah it was a great, yeah. it was a great experience to meet those people. You know, even people that drop early and stuff, a, a kinship, there's, you know, it was, it was a great experience. Josh, did you guys plan ahead of time that you were going to keep pace with each other the entire run? Because Tad, Tad had mentioned, and correct me if I'm wrong in that, but Tad had mentioned to me that you guys pretty much ran together the entire time. And did was that always the plan, was to stick together? And did that help or hurt you at any point? Yeah. <clears throat> yep, that was always the plan. And I think... I have no doubt that it helped us, you know, because in, and that race is unique in that why would you take off and leave somebody? You know what I mean? You, you have to, there's no point in running nine or 10 minute miles. You're just, you're just going to hurt yourself. So the time spent together, it's a slow enough pace. You can keep conversation. Like Tom said, once we got, you know, and even, even then, once we got to the road, the conversations that we had, like he said about Sarah, she mm -hmm. easy to talk to, and and uh, Mike Rowe, we had talked to him quite a bit too. You know, it was just awesome to, especially when it gets dark, you need somebody there to talk to to pass that time because you're just staring at the road from your headlamp. You know, so yeah, we had planned to stay together from. So, so when Cecil, when you decided you were done, so you did, you were at 75 miles, yeah. I believe. Yep. Um, was that, did you, did, were you guys all aware that he was going to be done? Were you struggling? And what, what made you stop at 75? Yeah. Not that, I guess a, I'll go. not that that's a shameful stopping <laughs> point. No, I, I completely <laughs> accept it. So I'll go into a little bit of a story behind it. So. Um, in our training all summer, um, every, it was kind of cool, I guess you could say, but it was always somebody different crashing. You know, we, there was times where that all of us couldn't finish a run. Um, and um, we got kind of towards, and it, and it was always due to a stomach issue or something hurt or whatever. And I always had the strongest stomach. You could shove anything in it and it just worked. And I was, and I got a little bit. I guess proud of that. Um, so I didn't, I don't think I had my nutrition right when we did the race and mm -hmm. it snuck up on me about mile 50. Um, and up to this point, and I'm, I'm not, I'm not bragging, but the last few training runs, I felt like I might've had the upper advantage. Like I'm going to make 50 or I'm going to make this hundred miles. You know, if anybody does it, I'm doing it. And <laughs> that was my mindset. And and Josh and Tom, um, both of them were always just concerned about their stomach, what they're going to eat and whatever. And I never got that fear because I've never had an issue before. Mm -hmm. Well, when we transitioned to the road, it, I got that issue. Um, so for the next 25 miles after we transitioned to the road, I came back with the same water bottle that I left with and it was pretty much full uh -huh. and I couldn't eat. eat. I, did, I was able to get a Coke down at one point and it seemed to help, but... 25 miles of that and I, I just I guess I just crashed you know I ran I ran out of energy I think my body was good um I felt strong still but I just crashed from um tired and and nutrition I guess and okay I, I threw in the towel at that 25 or that 75 with um I guess I lost all hope of, of trying to finish the next 25 and I came in and I came in later that time and told the guys, like, I can't go back out, guys. And it was pretty heartbreaking. Um, we had our mindset, and I had a big fear of not being able to support them if they needed help, okay. you know, being on yeah. the trail. Um, and it felt like I, I let them down a little bit. Um, and it, 
by the end of the day, the next day I was over that and I was so ecstatic that I actually ran 75 miles and that's the way I still feel today. So. Yeah. <laughs> so when, so when you were having your stomach issues, uh, were you nauseated or what, or did you have an upset stomach? Like yeah. it was upset. Um, so even water, it mm -hmm. just felt like, you know, I was going to bring it back up. Um, okay. So, and, and that's the way I felt that whole 25 miles. And I think just being, I don't do all that great with tiredness either. And I think just to, it compounded with both of them and yeah, that's with, okay. Wrote, wrote the end. Yeah. So that was, that was still during the night loop that you stopped. Yeah. So that would have been what, like three o'clock in the morning, I think. Yeah. There. Okay. Had you guys done any, any night running to try to prepare for the you know, for the dark and everything, or, we, we We bought headlamps. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Fair enough. At least you had that, right? <laughs> yeah. In 2016, Cecil and I ran that Ragnar in the dark, you oh, know. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So, but, I mean, that was years ago, but we've, you know, we're, we've been, we've done shift work in the past, you know, in our life, so we know what it was like to try to stay up all night, so we just hoped that, that would, you know, okay. push us through but, you know, when Cecil dropped, so we knew Cecil was having problems, but we obviously didn't know the extent of it. You know, we were dealing with our own, you know, trying to eat and drink in between and, and, and didn't know to the extent of what he was eating or not eating and, you know, knew he was trying to triage it every time he came in. And I remember distinctly when he drops, Josh and I looked at each other and was like, oh, crap. <laughs> yeah. Did, did that affect you guys mentally? Uh, um, like it, 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 it was a shock initially, but then I think it actually inspired us. So, okay, now we have to do it, you know. Okay, yeah. So it was, it was like, okay, you know, knuckle down and, and, and keep going. Yeah. yeah. Cecil, yeah. did you just uh, curl up and go to bed, or did you end up, like, turning into crew for them? Um, a little bit of both. I did take a, a power nap, um, okay. and then I tried to support them when they came in. Okay, Yeah. And because you weren't able to leave then either, you just kind of had to curl up wherever your tent was. Yeah, which was right? fine. I was, I was stayed there until if they wanted to run two hundred. And that, yeah. that's so yeah. we were there for so. So, um, where I wanted to ask you to get back to nutrition. Um, what did you guys? Because there has been uh, a variety of of things that people you know swear by for nutrition. I think. Mike said all he did was tailwind for like the first 12 hours or something. He didn't eat anything solid until the night. Um, Sarah's husband's cooking her like full meals and stuff. So what what was your guys' um, plan for nutrition? Were you eating solid foods throughout the whole day? And, you know, what were you using to rehydrate and stuff? I had, I, had, I just kind of had a, a general plan of, a minimum amount of calories that I wanted to take in at, you know, in between each lap. So I would do, I mixed up to make it easier on the crew. I mixed up just water bottles with tailwind in them. Mm -hmm. There were like 150 calories. So I was trying to have, I want to, I think it was like 250 was, was my minimum of 250. Cause okay. here, somebody told me that, you know, you wanted to take in at least half of what you were burning. Okay. Yep. Lock bags. I just took a variety of like Nature Valley bars or Belvita breakfast bars, and uh, I love those things. <laughs> you know, so the each bag had like a hundred calories in it, except for I would do a piece of wheat bread with peanut butter on it, and that was a little more. And then I took I took like seventeen bananas. I didn't eat that many bananas, but <laughs> <laughs> the. the I, I didn't want any more bananas. Okay. But, so that was the goal. And I and I I was happy that I was able to stick to that for the majority of the time. I had maybe two loops late, you know, like four or five o'clock in the morning where I just I didn't want any solid food and I might have drank the tailwind or just drank some water. Mm -hmm. but maybe a lap later I sort of felt the effects of that started to get a little bit dizzy and stuff, you know, like maybe, hey, I should have been putting some calories in, but that that was my. Okay. Thomas, did you do something similar? Yeah. Did you all, use, did you all use Tailwind? Yeah, we all use Tailwind, yeah. Okay. 
and that's that's from Maggie, right? So again, watching yeah. her do that, we're like, what's this tailwind stuff? So you know, you yeah. look it up. I mean, couldn't get better, you know, sales pitch, right? And and again, I think as Cecil said, me and Josh have the have the weaker stomachs, right? So it was like, oh, this stuff's easy on your gut, and and believe me, we we tried. <laughs> Tried every every kind of ratio of how much to, to drink because if you drink too much of it or you you know, make it too strong, it it, it does affect the gut or at least it affects ours. But, um, yeah. And again, that that goes to that trial and effect thing. While you're training, you have to figure that out. So you know, if, if, if any advice I give to people is you have to do that while you're training. You you got to simulate that. Cecil would go crazy because we'd do a 20 mile run and I'd eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches every five miles. Just to see what it's going to be like. <laughs> like we'd stop yeah. and like eating a, eating a, you know, a half a peanut butter and jelly. So I was all over the place with my nutrition. And again, it's it's kind of a uh, maybe an OCD thing with me. Like even today when we ran, I had a tote of everything under the sun. You know, from band aids to Pepto to, to peanut butter sandwiches. Right. So you know, it, so I, I I had a lot of mashed potatoes because I thought that was going to be a go-to thing you know pretty plain bland not going to mess you up and I probably had enough to do probably eight to ten loops of that and I probably only ate three or four because it got to be you know a little mm. too heavy okay. um, Cecil, Cecil turned me on to the like uh, what do you call it Cecil it's a it's like a tortilla yeah just a tortilla type thing so those are actually the bomb right so it's those soft I forget the brand name of them, but it's like a, you know, soft taco shell. So yeah. you take one of those, squirt some honey on it and, and down the hatch. So those were pretty good. Um, I, you know, I do avocados. Um, I was a little bit all over the place. Bananas, peanut butter and jelly is, is one of my favorites. And like Josh was saying in the morning, I can re distinctly remember, I think we had about, th we were about three loops from 100. And Josh typically ran a little bit ahead of me, you know, like this, or or we would run a different pace up the hills and kind of catch up. And I remember he was coming back to me, so I thought, oh, he's slowing down a little bit. And back to this Chad Wright thing. So we made a pact, you know, not only to run together, but that you don't give voice to your pain. So we would never talk about anything. That hurt you. you give voice to your pain, you give power to it, and then you're done. So we never talked. Uh -huh. you, never, you never said, I'm hurting, I'm done. So, Say when Cecil, that's, we didn't know how bad Cecil was because when he quit, that was the first we, you know, heard that he was hurting. So anyway, Josh and I were running up this hill, and I think we were only about a quarter mile from the end, and we kind of looked at each other, and it was kind of one of those things like, "How you doing?" And we didn't want to <laughs> say it, but it was like, I'm a, little, "I'm a little woozy," and I'm like, "I am too." So let's make sure we eat. And and it, it's been the same thing, the same story as Josh. Like you eat so much, you at a backyard ultra, you can't skip like it's a it's a death spiral if you skip like what happened to Cecil so you have to recover fast so I remember I had an issue at some point in the night where I just you know felt like I was overfilling my stomach or just getting a little sick and so I kept drinking you know and I'm drinking tailwind and drinking water but I was like I don't want to eat this loop but that'll catch up with you and that had caught up with me at the same time as Josh like I needed a break from eating but it's like I needed that signal of hey we got to eat again and I'm like and we did, and, and it wasn't perfect the next loop, but I think the loop after that, it was like, okay, we're kind of good again. You know, like okay. you know, that, that got us to the end. And, and you have no time to, 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 to kind of fix stuff, right? Like that's, that's the beauty of this backyard ultra stuff. You have to, you have to fix it quick. And, and that right. was our only answer was concentrate on the loop we're on. It doesn't matter, don't get, excited about oh we're going to do 50 miles or, or we're going to do 100 or wonder what it's going to be like after we do 100 you have to you have to be present on the loop you're at now and triage and fix that loop and and adjust every time you come in you can't yeah. you can't yeah. go ahead. did you guys you know from watching bigs i'm assuming you guys followed it um you know a lot of their strategy was that they were faster, obviously, on pavement for the night loops. And, I mean, they planned on running for days, obviously, which, you know, you guys weren't thinking you were going to be out there for three days. But was 
you know, for the night loops on pavement, were you guys trying to get in a little bit quicker so that you would have that longer rest period? Or were you just trying to maintain a steady state throughout the whole thing? What was the strategy for that? Well, it kind of took us by surprise because we knew the elevation of the trail loop and we knew what, what kind of effort that was going to take. And we thought we were going to get, uh, um, I guess, uh, an easy pass once we got to the road. But that wasn't the case. And the road loop ended up being more than twice the elevation than we thought it was. And I don't know how we got confused there. So it didn't really end up being much easier. And I think um, we all like trail running anyway over the road. I mean, it was nice just to change it up a little bit, but in yeah. my opinion, it wasn't, I was kind of struggling at the time anyway, but it, it wasn't much easier. Okay. I so first, your your times were either just about the same or maybe even getting longer at that point? They were yeah. uh, they about the same, yeah. Okay. okay. I actually had one loop where I don't I don't know, I don't remember why or whatever, but I, I ran it a little bit faster. And when I got back I thought that was a mistake. And then uh -huh. as I sat and when it was time to get up for the next loop. I, absolutely that was a mistake now the the people that are at bigs you know their bodies must be more conditioned you know than mine is but that rest was a blessing and a curse because okay. by the time we got deep when I would get up to go to that line I felt like I was 85 years old my my yeah. joint so sore like it was like the running I did conditioned my muscles, it conditioned my wind, it conditioned, you know, the, the mental side of it. But my joints for that first and that that the beginning to when I was warm kept getting longer as the night went. You know, I might be a mile and a half into that loop before my body warmed up like that first mile, mm -hmm. mile and a half, I was struggling. Now I would warm up and it would be like, I don't really want to stop because my body feels good and I know what's going to happen. Right. Yeah. Did you guys, uh, did uh, Tom and Cecil, did you guys experience that same thing? Yeah, yeah a little bit. And, and I'll tell you a little story because let's, let's get some controversy going here. <laughs> I realized that, that here we are, you know, three country bumpkins, so Appalachian hillbillies rolling into Michigan to do this race. We don't know anything about a backyard ultra. We don't know how far we're going to run. I mean, 50 would have been great, but here we are. We're going to run 100. And so when we, you know, I, I wouldn't say we breeze through the 50, but but I remember seeing 30 go by and 40 go by. And I'm like, wow, you know, we're 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 going to make it to 50. And we got to the road, and and you know, when we first met Sarah, you know. Josh's first um, conversation with Sarah, like, aren't you the girl that won last year? And she was like, no, 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 that girl's back there. And <laughs> thought, oh, that's a bunch of crap. You know, because, you know, we didn't know her, but I think I recognized her from a picture from last year. And so, anyway, so, you know, it, you know, it was all fun. But anyway, so, so we run. So, obviously, then we run more and more with her. And I remember telling these guys, like, I think she's messing with us because she would go out fast sometimes and she would go out really slow sometimes. And I'm like, we're on her pace. Don't, don't get caught up with her because we were enamored by her. You know, we were playing music and talking to her. And it's like, I don't know if she's messing with us or not because she, she was going out so slow. I'm like, she's going to take us out slow and then sprint back and we're not going to make it, you know, leave her <laughs> first, let's go. Or when she go out real fast, you know, just let her go, you know. And, uh, I wonder and that, if she you, was messing with No, you. I don't think she was. And I don't want to, you know, like, I get, I'm just kind of screwing around. But, I mean, that was our conversation was, like, we got to stick to our pace. Like, and, and to be honest, everybody's on the same pace. So it's easy. And it was weird with Mike. Mike, we never seen Mike on the road. He was way out ahead of us and way out. And then we ended up back at the same time. So yeah. I, don't, I don't really know how, how Mike – you know, ran his pace, but same yeah, problem. I, I can, I can tell you what he did. Cause he told us, so he, he would go out a little bit faster on the road. And then I can't remember how many minutes, you know, if he was giving himself like a full 10 minutes as he went in, he would walk a lot going in. And that's when he was eating. 
Oh, yeah. So that would make sense. So, so he wasn't waiting until he got back to his his crew yep. to eat. He was eating on that way back in from the loop, from the road. Yeah. So he would slow down significantly to to cram food in for that yeah. period. Like he, he would he would probably have been at least five minutes ahead of us every loop, and and, and we never seen him. But then, like when we right when we get to the finish, there he'd be just finishing with us. So we knew. Yeah. Something there at the end to slow down, I, but that, that's a strategy. That's a good and, strategy. Yeah, and he's a road marathoner. You know, like I said, he had mm -hmm. never run a trail before, <laughs> not even in training. So the road was his strong spot. Well, and it was the same way when we were on the trail. I can remember, you know, we didn't know what to do. And again, you, you know, you're. I don't know. I can't remember if there was twenty four or thirty people on our on our loop, and you know, we just jumped in there and, and went and. You know, you all got to finish at the same time. So, you know, we ended up around Miko most of the time, or, or at least, you know, progressed our way up. And as people dropped, you know, we start finding ourselves towards the top of the group. And mm -hmm. and Matt was was in there. And I can remember, you know, we would we would do a turnaround at the, at the gate, and they'd be coming back towards us. And and there were certain people that had like a big, you know, big grin on their face, like like, you know, they're not in any pain. And I would tell these guys, same way, give them the same look because, you know, they're sizing, they're sizing you up, right? It's, it's a, it's a, I'm not, I'm not dropping. I'm the top dog here, right? Yeah. And, you know, so there's a, a little bit of strategy like that, right? To, to try to build your own confidence, you know, in the, yeah. that we can do this. We belong here, right? That's fun to hear that you guys were kind of, we're getting into that, like psyching each other out a little bit because... Um, you know, I don't feel like that happens so much uh, during the day as it starts to happen at night. And, you know, uh, it, it's just, it's interesting that you also got into it as well. I don't know. I don't think Sarah was trying to psych you guys out. <laughs> but if she was, that was an excellent tactic. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I, that, yeah, just to keep everybody else on their toes. But um, she had mentioned in one of our interviews that she was actually feeling a ton of pressure this year because she was last year's winner. Like, I thought maybe she would have been like, you know, oh, I got this. I did it last year. I'll do it again this year, you know. But she actually felt a lot of pressure to to repeat that same performance. And what if she couldn't, you know? So um i think she was more trying to psych herself up than psych you guys out <laughs> so. well you'll have to ask her that after you, when you talk to her about her 200 mile big yeah 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 we um i actually did uh an interview with her uh and her husband and her friend lauren who crewed for her for bigs so we are going to see that come out at some point I think Tad is saving it uh, for a little while uh, here, but um, you'll you'll get to hear uh, some of her psych outs and stuff for, especially at night uh, for Biggs. So, and, well, and you know, the ironic yeah. thing with Biggs was she got to come with three more Ohio guys. So she had Gabe Rainwater, which we talked about earlier, Harvey Lewis, yeah, the guy from Wooster. So you know, yeah. it's kind of kind of a well, neat thing. And I think it's cool, you know, that you guys um, chose to run this really as a team, I'll say. I mean, it is an individual event. Obviously, it's a last man standing event. But um, you guys also had you trained together. You had the mileage goal together. Um, was there ever a point where, where you know, Tom and, and Josh, you guys were running those last that last loop together. You decided to finish together. Was there any thought from one of you that mm, maybe I'll go do one more than my buddy? You know, like, or was or was that not even a thought? I I did not have that thought. I <laughs> 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 thought and said, you know what? I think I could have did another loop, and you know we probably could have, but we had kind of talked about it before. You know, we was like, well, we could go further than a hundred, but there's so much more that would have went into that. Right. So that's another hour for our crew that's already exhausted. And mm -hmm. I mean, I, I was hurting. I probably could have did four more miles, but 
I mean, am I really going to feel that much better about 104 than 100? True. <laughs> and I knew I wasn't going to beat Sarah. I mean, it was obvious she was, to me, it was obvious that she was going to win that thing. But okay. Yeah, she left us in the dust. So we had, the, you know, we had that weird, we were off an hour because of the thunderstorm, right? So yes, we, we started late. So we had to go back to the trail. We were hoping to finish on the road, right? So we were like, oh, crap, we got to go back. To the That's trail. right. Like, we didn't even change shoes. We ran it in our road shoes. We're like, we, we ain't, like, I can't get these shoes off. There's no way. <laughs> and I remember, like, a group of us, it was like, all right, who's going to lead? And we're like, well, Sarah, you've been leading us all night. And she just left us in the dust. We never seen her. Like, she just went, Phew and was gone so me josh and and miko and i think abby was behind us and, and you know it was just at that point for me it was just do not fall down and hurt yourself where you can't finish because like, there was that's where i felt all the pressure was at. like it's four miles and we get 100 but it's yeah. on the trail that i felt i tripped 50 times and fell down a couple of times like i was like now my legs are shot how am i going to get around this without falling down but just make it and I think Josh and I were so exhausted. We're like, Miko, you better get us there. And, you know, like he walked to the top of the hill and kind of be slow. And I'm like, you better not screw this up. Just <laughs> 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 going on how fast he got us there. But, yeah, because he, he, did he finish with you guys? I can't, now I'm trying to. I'm he did a couple like, more loops, yeah. He did a couple more loops after you guys yeah. were done. That's yeah. right. Okay. I thought and, he had gone. He had gone. Maybe he did like one, one hundred four, one hundred eight, or something. I can't. Yeah, remember. I think he did one hundred eight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and so, like Josh said, we a hundred was our goal. So it, you know, you really feel this sense of accomplishment. It's like we, Josh and I actually talked about that today as we, you know, did our two sixteen-minute miles <laughs> at the end of the race today. And it was like, do you, you know, what, what what is our goal for next year? Do we do it? Is it one fifty? Is Do you set a goal? Yes, you set a goal. Okay, because, you know, we've we've talked, I've talked with a couple people about this, like, you know, you have this goal in your mind, and as you're getting near to that goal, it's almost like your, bo your body, it's a mind over matter thing, but your body's like, you're almost there, and now I'm going to shut down. Yeah. So, like, we were... That's we why were talking, I didn't... Do you set the goal at all, or do you just say, I'm going to run until I can't run anymore? <laughs> so my favorite quote ever is, a goal without a plan is a wish. Hmm. So you have to have a goal. And, and you, so you have to, you ha it has to be a stretch goal, right? It has to be, if I make it to this, that would be ridiculous, right? So it's 150, right? If, if yeah. I set it for 120, I'm not going over 120. Right, right. Just, just to your point. So that's where when we said it, like our original goal was 50. So right. at one point while we were training, I said, I would tell myself like, well, if I get to 50, I'll be happy because that was my original goal. If I get to 75, that's great. If I get to 100, that's super. As I did yeah. more research on the mental aspect of that, they were like, no, you'll quit at 50 if that's your goal. So I had to like retrain my brain to say, it's 100, period. That's it. And, and yeah. that really yeah. happened in the last month of training that I had to convince myself it was 100. Yeah. Yeah. Did it seem like a daunting goal to you or, or did it seem, you know, were you like, oh, God, maybe I'm like, I'm really overstepping myself here or we were it, it obviously off. had to be something that you thought you could accomplish. Otherwise, well, it, it would have been too overwhelming. Well, it was overwhelming. Like I say, it's a 70 mile PR. So if we if we ran seventy miles like Cecil did, that would have been awesome. And, right. You know, we weren't blasted at all over social media. Like we're going to go run a hundred miles. That's our goal. You know, we kept it to ourselves. You know, our, our immediate okay. knew that that was our goal. And I think people looked at us like we were crazy. Like, like yeah, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah. I'm telling you, it's it's that mental. When you say I'm never going to quit, I'm never going to quit. I have two two options i'm going to succeed or i'm going to break my body trying to succeed or something that's out of my control is going to detract me from getting there yeah you'll succeed you know i had it written in the top of my my hat that it said i'll never quit and it said one loop at a time to yeah. remind me that 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 was it and we would shout that back and forth to each other how you yeah. doing great no matter how you felt you don't tell you don't give voice to your pain 
I, I like that. I like that because I have found, you know, in, in some other things that I've done, I found it's a lot easier to quit when you have a buddy to quit with you. <laughs> and when you complain together, you know what I mean? Like, it yeah. just makes it so much more easy to be like, I'm tired. Are you tired? Yeah, I'm tired. Let's quit. Okay. <laughs> you know, so that I like that you guys did that. Like, don't, don't talk about your pain, <laughs> even though that sounds kind of like, like, I don't like a like a mean thing to say to your friend like I don't want to hear about your pain but it, it does it make because you're probably feeling the same pain and once you guys start complaining together it is so much more easy to just be you know to just quit so so if, if you feel that way they feel that way too and right because they, they, they got this thing going on right yeah it's just a thought in your head right yeah if, if, if you can you can have all the thoughts in your head but think about this it's not real if it's in your head when you speak it it becomes real it's called the power yeah. of spoken word so if anything you say is positive i'll never quit i'm doing this i'm doing that it's positive if you say man my legs are killing me now you just gave power to that yeah. pain and it's going to overwhelm you and it's hard to, yeah. to bring back yeah I like it. Oh, you guys get some good stuff here, you guys. I love uh, it. <laughs> um, and it out on papers that they taped up inside the canopy. <laughs> what's that? <laughs> Say that Every again? Back and sat down in the chair. All of these mantras were on a piece of paper hanging up inside the canopy. Nice. I yeah. like it. I wrote on my arm in Sharpie for mine, like, to, you know, my mileage goal and everything. But then it washed off because I got so sweaty. <laughs> so, <laughs> writing it on paper was probably smart. <laughs> the other thing about the goal, you asked about having a goal and, like, who knew about it. So we had that goal. So all the guys that I worked with knew what that goal was. So when I started to get up, you know, 80, 85 miles and I was thinking – this is like really hard and I would like to quit mm -hmm. about all the crap I was going to hear from those guys. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I already went five. Why can't you do a hundred? You know, so yeah. that, that, would, that would motivate you too. You know, none of them would have actually said that though. <laughs> oh. oh yeah. <laughs> you think so? so? Oh man. <laughs> I'll tell you why I know that. When I got back, they said, so who won? I said, Sarah, a girl? <laughs> you got a girl? I said, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. See, now most people I know would have been like, you could have run like, you know, 20 miles and I would have found that impressive. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it. I, I have read, though, um, before that sharing – publicly you know publicly sharing your goal for something that you really really want to accomplish is actually a smart way to do it because of that social aspect that you don't now you have all these people you don't want to let down <laughs> and you might be more inclined to you know keep on trucking even though you don't really want to um so i mean it's it's smart to to share it with other people too, because it makes you more accountable, I guess is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's it's interesting the whole um psychological and mental aspect that goes into this of uh, this kind of event, any type of endurance event, I guess. Um do, as as you guys were were going about it. Um, did you find that you were experiencing your highs and lows? Uh, at the same time, or or were you guys, you know, I, I guess you didn't really talk about it, so you might not know, <laughs> but, um, you know, did you find that you, you kind of felt like you guys were struggling at the same points, or you were doing well at the same points in the race? Um, I don't know, I guess, does that make sense, this question? <laughs> I think that you said it yourself, we didn't talk about it. Okay. But oh, was, Tom talked about earlier, you know, when when he looked at me and I, I, I had stopped talking at that point. And mm -hmm. the reason I was talking was because I was trying to think of all the excuses I could give for quitting, basically. I mean, I, I hate to say that, but it's a fact. 
you know, and okay. I'm, I'm all right. And I'm like, I don't know, you know, I just, I just kind of done with this. And uh, so, and I, Tom didn't say, well, you know, I'm in pain too, or he's just, you know, I'm having similar things. And then he said, well, we've come too far now. We're not quitting now. It was like, that was, that was it. You know, I was like, he's right. You know, I can't, I can't stop. I can't quit on him now. We got to go. And, and like he said, that next loop felt better. And it, I have no doubt it was a mental thing, you know? So I, I feel like we struggled at the same time. And okay. like he started at 50 and we kind of saw his, you know, nutrition not going right. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's it's hard, you know, the the stomach issues and the nutrition, you never know when that's going to happen and and Cecil like you, you actually you made it quite a long ways even, you know, while you were struggling. Um, you know, you said what another 25 miles after you first started having problems. So, that's pretty impressive cuz, you know, from what I gather, you know, once that stomach starts acting up, it it can be that downward spiral and it's hard to catch up within just a few laps. So, um, you know, that's kind of an, un, you know, one of those, you never know it could happen to anybody during any race at any point. And it's unfortunate, but you know, next time now, you know, not to, not to let it try to, you know, you can't let it go too far without eating that you have to, you can't catch up to it after that. So did you yeah. guys, I wanted to ask you guys, because I heard on the grapevine that, was it you guys who did the caffeine taper? Yeah. Yes. How? So yeah. tell me, tell me about how, how you did that and did it affect, do you feel like it was effective uh, for your run or was it kind of hard to tell? What is the caffeine taper, I guess? So Josh, go, go ahead, Josh quit drinking coffee for two weeks before the race basically and i okay. absolutely do feel like because i took um caffeinated tailwind at night and that that was definitely a nice boost okay so you didn't start using yeah. caffeine until the night loop right yeah. okay and that was a strategy we learned from maggie so just reading like the blogs and, and things from maggie it was, that's what she said so she quit drinking caffeine and taking caffeine and then only use caffeinated tailwind at night. So we did the same thing. So it was like, okay, 10 o'clock, we'll switch to caffeinated and, and, and see how that works. So, and again, we were only planning on going one night. So right. that, that, you know, it's interesting, the dynamic and, and, you know, I can't wait to hear Sarah's account of that, you know, of what you do the second night. Like, cause, cause that's the other thing you say, we're going to do 150. Well, that's another trail loop and then you make it to the road and everybody says, well, if you make it to the road, you can make it another. But, you know, like you talked earlier, they, they were sleeping. Like they were literally taking right. minute naps. But I think, I, I, and I don't know, I'd, I'd like to see the elevation, but I think Big's road loop was a little easier than Ode. Okay. So, I, I feel like. Standpoint. So yeah. I think we were able to get back a little faster and, and, and get those little naps. But yeah. wow. You know, we thought about it, but uh, I, I don't even know how we do it. Like, say, Josh and I, I we would have rather not stopped, really. Like, because you yeah. literally that first, and, and, and Ode, you know, on that on that road loop, it's all uphill. Like, the first three quarters of a mile is all uphill. So, it's not only, you know, you're tired and you're hurting, now you're going uphill. So, you walk, yeah. and it seems like Sarah and Mike and people were running sooner than what we were it was like really they're running already so now we gotta run because again like i told you we, I, I don't know that i looked at my watch ever we had all these weird strategies of oh when we hit the stairs we need to see what the time is so okay at 30 minutes we're at the stairs you know 45 minutes we're at the dam so that we knew if we were off our pace right because it's we were right. 50 minutes so it was like we wanted to like put it to a landmark like check your watch not not this pace or anything like at this landmark at the right time, we would know if we were slowing down or not. But we really didn't have to do that. We just ran with the people that ran before and just followed them, right? And and we were kind of doing that on the road as well. I mean, everybody wants to make it back. In time. So you knew if somebody was dropping way back, like, whoa, we need to be up here with, with you know, the people that yeah. finished. So 
again, being rookies at it, I don't, I don't know that we had all that great strategy. Just finish. <laughs> right. Get back in time. <laughs> that's, that's a decent strategy. <laughs> um, were there any memories that stood out to you during the race um, that you, you know, that you have that you're like, oh, I don't, probably won't ever forget that. Or were, and were there any real foggy periods that you guys had where you're like, I really don't remember those last three loops or, you know, <laughs> like, did you experience any of that? Well, the night kind of all ran together, you know, once you got tired, but I think the, some of the best memories I have, aside from, you know, meeting people, and obviously Sarah is very personable. She was, she was super helpful too, you know, super easy to talk to, tell you anything, you know, cause you know, she, it wasn't like, it's not like other competitions where like, you know, it's me against you or whatever. It was, you know, at, at least in my mind, it was me against me. I'm just, I have this goal of a hundred. Mm -hmm. The memory that I have, and I, I think probably getting no sleep had an effect on this, but like when I crossed the line, I was so emotional. It was, it was like, like I have never, other than when my children were born or like getting married, I don't remember having that much joy, you know, in a uh -huh. random life and just like, and that, la that didn't just end there either. Like that lasted, that lasted through you know, when we went back to the hotel and I'm on my way home, like, and I, like, I couldn't just stop being so full of joy that, you know, that we had actually set out to do what, that, what we. Had. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm crying, Josh. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so similar experience for me, but I kind of like totally crashed when I went across the line, like my body said, okay, we're done shutting down. Like, I felt like I was drunk. Like I couldn't hardly walk. Cecil drove me to the motel. Like, yeah. like it was like, I, I don't know if I can function. And, and I didn't feel like that when I finished, like I didn't feel that wiped out, but it was like my body was holding on so tight so long. And when I gave it permission to quit, it was just like, okay, we're done. I'm, I told him I can't sit down or I'm not getting back up. Like I am, you know, done. But yeah. and, and to echo what Josh was saying too about Sarah, she was literally giving us tips like, "Here's how you hike better. Here's this run walk method." Like we were, we were like practicing technique out on the road because what else are you going to do for <laughs> right. twenty four hours, right? So, so that was what like was really like Josh and I appreciated that time, you know, with her. Like, that, you know, once we kind of bonded, I guess, you know, there was that initial. Like, oh, you know, what's what's going on there? As she sized us up, you know, I think oh, she didn't know if we were a threat or not to, to you know, if, if she was insecure about, you know, you know, holding up her challenge. Like, we could have been some ringer. Oh, her title, uh, yeah. Yeah, but I think once she realized we were truly the, you know, country bumpkins, it probably shouldn't have been going that deep, you know, and we were, <laughs> you know, doing it on, on you know, just because we said we could do it. It, it, it was an yeah. amazing experience, like the whole thing, every, everything about it was, a, was and, and, you know, fighting over COVID, right? So we have to remember yeah. this too, this, this, this race got delayed a month. So, so if you think about our training, we're training, 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 we peak, we start tapering, boom, yeah. we can't, oh crap. Now what do we do? Start training again. So training, yeah. training. is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? Is it going to yeah. happen? Is it not going to happen? You know, so it was like pretty emotive. And then it was like, oh. Okay, we got to get ready and, you know, get yeah. up there, you know, so. Were you guys, do you guys feel, because uh, I, I found this interesting, do you feel that the COVID quarantine, if you guys were off work or whatever, I don't know, but do you feel like it helped your training or did it hinder your training? Because I, I know a lot of people who are like, oh man, I, it, I had so much more time to run. <laughs> like, yeah. how did you guys feel about it? We're all essential workers, so we never got a break from work, but we okay. got a break. Uh, you know, we had to take breaks from our after work life, um, and that's where we had the extra time, especially Tom. And um, he helps or runs a race team for motorcycles, and their okay. season got cut in half, if not um, less than half. So that's what freed up his time. Um, of course, our church got canceled, so we would run on Sundays, which we never had that opportunity before. So it definitely gave us the the extra time we needed to train for this. 
Okay. So that's, and that's our fear about continuing to train for another one. How are we going to get that time? Because it, right. it took us a, we did a lot of training. Yeah. Yeah. We don't want and then, COVID I think that's the hardest part for people, you know, even when they're training for a marathon, even, you know, it is a lot of work to train and it's very time consuming, especially if you have families, you know, um, I mean, if, and then if you have kids on top of it, like it's, you, your families have to be very agreeable to supporting your training schedule because you're not around a lot. So yeah. My um, wife got mad a few times. Yeah. But there, it, it, there was times where I tried to compromise and I got um, wood clamps and clamped my lap, my work laptop to my treadmill and did 20 miles on a treadmill, which was very painful. <laughs> yeah, that, that would not be fun. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's hard. So, um, and I was the complete opposite when my races got canceled in you know the early spring I was like and I'm done running <laughs> like I just <laughs> training. I'm like there's no way in hell like any anything's gonna happen this year you know that's, I was like why am I putting myself through this I'm just gonna go do fun stuff like ride my bike and, you know <laughs> like type one fun not type two fun so um so yeah when Ode was when they finally announced like it was actually gonna happen I was like oh man like I am not in shape <laughs> like there, there's just no way that this, that this is happening this year. So I bowed out till next year, but, um, but I followed you guys, you know, I was waking up in the middle of the night and checking the, checking the spreadsheet that was being updated and stuff. So it, it was tons of fun to follow you guys. And, and are we going to see you next year then? I think that's still undecided. Oh, undecided. we, we got to figure out this whole training, how we're going to train for it first. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, you guys get to work on that because we definitely want to see you back. And, um, and you know, if, if you were going to have a goal for next year, what are you thinking? Tom said 150. 150? Yeah. I think you can do it. <laughs> well, the problem is, so here's the problem with that. So like, like we talked earlier, like we all finished at the same time. So we started to have that conversation. What if we all do 100? How do we finish, right? So for right. me and Josh, I, you know, once we got into that, it was easy. Like, oh, we're quitting. But we had joked around about, okay, we'll do one more lap. And whoever wins the next lap, like, it's a, it's a race, right? Whoever comes in first on the fourth uh. mile that, that, you know, they get to claim victory or whatever. Um, but, again, 150, I, I don't know how we figure out who keeps going or not keeps going or or whatever but the, the yeah. bigger question is if we're doing 150 we have to make sure sarah's bowing out because we're not we can't go 200 we you know we we got to figure out how to get that golden ticket from. Uh, so, yeah. so far so far 119 is, is far so if we go 150 we're going to push it pretty hard yeah and like i said you never know who's going to have stomach trouble who, you know what i mean like it it is any player's game really um, not yeah. that I'm wishing stomach trouble on anybody, <laughs> but, but you just never know what's going to happen and, and, um, you know, or, or who's going to even show up for it. You know, other people might have con conflicting events that, you know, they want to try out something new next year. You never know, but, um, we hope to see you guys back and, um, and see what you think of, of hopefully a non COVID style, uh, mm -hmm. race. I'm hoping that by next July that, that we'll be back to normal with that kind of stuff. So, um, have you guys thought about signing up for any of the other Ode events like the Ode tonight or, um, the eight hours of Ode that happens in January? <laughs> you, you want to run in the snow? <laughs> <laughs> no, yes. Cecil's like no. <laughs> so I'm running a couple races locally in January and February, and the first one actually is the same day as as the Ode. But I believe they had a May race last year, or, in it, or tried to, and it got the kind of virtual. Yeah. Year. So the Ode to the oh. Night is in May. Yeah. So and that's you, a possibility. Yeah, that's May 15th to 16th, 
And I, it's already on um, the Ultra Sign Up website, so you can sign up for it already. But um, <clears throat> I think they start at dusk. I can't remember exactly what time. All the details are on there. But you run the road loop um, at up to 12 hours, and you can run it backyard style, or you can run it just as a continuous and see how, how far you get in 12 hours. So... Uh, if you guys can't make it or, you know, decide that the, you can't get the training in for your 150 next July, maybe come to the May race because I think that would be fun. And, and everybody would, would love to see you again. May race would be a good midway training point to check in, right? Yeah. And, can, and, and there's no pressure. You can do as many miles as you want. You can use it as a training run, you know. Um, and then, and then party for the rest of the time. <laughs> so, um, is there anything, uh, that you guys wanted to talk about that we haven't covered? I think, or I, actually, I, there is one more question I have for you. If you had any advice for next year's race or any, you know, requests as far as the setup and execution goes, is there anything that you would want to see done differently or, um, or was it pretty solid? I think it was pretty solid. Okay. Hopefully next year as, we have food. You as know, long as there's like, no midpoint transition, I guess. Okay. That was not solid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So out of our control, I realize. Yeah, and you know, I don't I don't know. Um, we'll have to ask Tad this, you know, from some of his feedback he's gotten already about that. You know, if we have to do the same thing again next year, will they will they alter it somehow um, to make it a little bit easier or what? Um, so we'll see. I don't know. I'm hoping you don't have to do it at all because um, that would be nice <laughs> and, and take away one one stressor at least, especially for crew. I think it was very yeah. stressful for the crew. Absolutely. Um, you know, I mean, for the runner too, but especially for the crew, even Sarah had mentioned like that's when she was like the meanest to her crew, <laughs> you know, like she's like, if I regret anything, I regret yelling at my husband during that transition because it was stressful. So, um, so yeah, hopefully if you guys are back next year, you won't have to deal with that, I hope. But, um, but yeah, any, anything that we missed that you guys wanted to mention, I think we've covered everything I wanted to ask you about. The only thing that I would like to say is that it'd be next year. I I can't for the life of me remember this lady's name, but this woman cheered for us, for everybody, the whole time. Like from uh, from the first loop to the last she worked. She was a worker. Volunteer. Okay. What was you her know you know, I think I know who you're talking about, but I can't I can't re recall her first name either. I know Tad would know. I'll find out for you guys. Yeah, she was the best. Was she at the gate? Mm -hmm. she, she was, was at the gate. gate. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. She was at the gate for the turnaround at night. Yeah. yeah. She, at yeah. night. Okay. Right. Was she, was she at the gate in the morning? No. What no. do you mean by the gate in the morning? The gate so, like when you went up, when you went up the hill and then did the turnaround and then got on the trail, or we, no, you guys were no. at a different start. So, no, nope. we did the gate. There was a girl there with fire water. This, yeah. this, <laughs> okay. This lady was probably um, 50s plus, and I know she's a cancer survivor. Used to okay. run, so she would. But I mean, it, enthusiasm, pep, like she was at the overlook most of the day. And then okay. she would turn around at night, all night long, and screamed at us all night long. Like she, <laughs> like known us from the overlook, right? And like heard us on like we were one of her own. And, and yeah. just can't say enough about her. That's awesome. I, I'll find out her name. I know exactly who you're talking about, um, but I don't know her first name, so I will find it out for you. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, she was she was awesome last year too. I think she was she was at the um, she was at the day loop and she was high fiving everybody like at the gate as we went by. So she was yeah very enthusiastic. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad she was there for you guys. So <laughs> you, you need that enthusiasm when you're going that many miles. <laughs> you need someone to be excited for you, right? 
Well, um, I think we'll wrap it up. We've we've done well over an hour. Darn it. I said I was going to be shorter, but we just had such good conversation. So, um, so I thank you guys again for coming on. Um, look for this posting, uh, you know, Tad posting this on the, the page within the next couple weeks. I know he wanted to get it out pretty soon. And, um, and then I'll be talking to Abby next week, too. So um, if you have anything, any, anything pressing you want me to ask or just text or email me or something. So, um, so we'll hear from her about her experience next week. But thanks again, guys. And um, I hope you have a good night. And I hope to see you next year. And good luck with all the rest of your running. Thank you very much. You too. Thank you. Let's see.